Greetings and welcome to Revenant Den. I'm Michael Hassenfang and this is episode 8 entitled The Two Presidents. It's following up on the previous episode I had, episode 7, about the monster mashing, uh, possession, and oppression, talking about spiritual warfare, and now how we're bringing it down to the human level of what is going on right before our eyes that we're seeing in this day and age. And I feel that there's a lot of spiritual warfare we still need to partake in and still need to battle and fight so that once they flee or are stifled in their actions, we will be able to see it in natural with the material plane and the people here and how they are screwing up pretty, pretty badly. And there's different levels of spiritual warfare, which we all can do. Uh, I just mentioned a few with the possession and oppression, stuff like that, about my own personal stories from last episode. If you haven't checked it out yet, I suggest you do. There's also a side note introduction, a prelude to episode 7 about a dream I had recently, which may explain a little bit more about what may be going on and may be coming fairly soon. There's other dreams and visions I've had too, which I will get into at a future date in different episodes, especially about the prophetic visions that I've had, um, and I'll explain those in a different episode. Um, but there's all types of warfare, there's intercession you can do. As far as I'm concerned, those who are patriots or battling politically within their own realms or even scientifically exposing the lies which the global elite have been trying to lay down too is another type of spiritual warfare i feel because it's stifling what they are trying to portray out as truth which is blatantly lies i have a friend of mine who's been fighting very strongly on that it had been for a few years uh, been on Fox News and um, Sky News and Infowars and speaking out at CPAC 2020 and doing a, a marvelous job of exposing those lies. And I feel once we get those lies torn down, we start to see these people for who they truly are. So there is different types of spiritual warfare that's going on, even if they are brought out into the light uh, in a natural and material form. The attacks, though, from both fronts, both the physical and the spiritual, upon these people are pretty strong. So I would suggest that even if you don't have much attack in your life, you can always intercess for these people. If you know someone personally who is um, a political figure or a um, prophetic figure or a politician or um, a patriot, Anyone who's speaking out in that, you know that they constantly have to be on the defense as well because the offense against them, the retaliation that they're getting, both in the natural and in the spiritual, is pretty intense. So always pray for them, always intercede for them, and just know that in the long run, it will be beneficial for them because if they didn't have as much intercession as they did and prayers going out to them and healing and protection from the Lord that you are giving in declarations and decreeings, um, their falls or the attacks they are getting may be much worse than originally intended. So <clears throat> just know that you're helping out so that they can get their job done as well too and bring more things to light. That said, on the spiritual warfare, which uh, I, I, I feel I didn't even like hit the tip of the iceberg on that one. I'm almost thinking about extending the series to another video and then a final conclusion video where I'm tying everything together. So it's sort of a, you know, 21 series instead of 19. Um, the last one going into Monster Mashing again, part two, which I go into even more depth on spiritual warfare because it feels like I've left out so much from the last episode. And we're going to be going into something in this episode where I feel I, I'm, I'm almost afraid I'm going to leave out a whole bunch of stuff just because there's so much to cover and so little time to do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a little scratch in the throat and it's a bit uh, kind of like um, acid reflux, I think. So coffee helps with acid reflux, right? Yeah, I know I'm not the brightest person, but just need to water it down anyway. 
Do I have an introduction for this video? Probably not. I think I'm just going to jump right into it with taking communion and giving a prayer for the day. In fact, maybe I should do this now, even if I did have an introduction, because I feel the Lord speaks to me better after I do this. And he kind of voices what I'm trying to say a little bit better than just my constant ramblings that I get. So we should start with remembering what the Lord has done for us and giving thanks to him. Heavenly Father, please forgive us of our sins that we have done since our last meeting together. Any actions or verbiage we had put out, which is pretty much me and my driving, because <laughs> I got road rage. Um, please forgive us of that in any self-indulgences, addictions, lust infatuations, just vices that we have, as well as not believing your word from time to time or questioning it or not having the faith to stand up for what we are doing. Please help us during this time as we partake in what you did for us in remembrance of what you did for us. Know that we are not alone, that we have you by our side and you are leading the way as well and behind us guarding. And I'm going to leave Father as I begin to speak today on the whole political and patriot side of things and the whole earthly deals of our natural, physical beings and the elites who try to run this world and the craziness thereof and all the confusion that is going on with the church about the political aspects. Please give me the voice to speak correctly to them and give them understanding of exactly why we need to be aware of what is going on and how we should pray into it and hopefully wake up a few more others and bring some more people to arms because we are in a time of war right now. I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. So, maybe spitballing here, but has anyone noticed any changes since 2020? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I, I think there's seems that uh, the world is perfectly going smoothly as it has been for the past couple hundred years, at least in this nation. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think the world is pretty self-aware of all the craziness that has been going down these past couple of years, especially since uh, late 2019 when COVID hit. Now, with 2016 and Trump winning, we started to see a bit of the mask being removed uh, at least to the political atmosphere of the people within our nation. I don't know how it is with the rest of you around the world and what things you have noticed within your own political atmosphere. But I think since 2016, and for me, even before then, like 2008, and even noticing stuff with like George Bush, I think that's when I first started really getting into politics. And I was actually more Democrat and more liberal way back then um, from 2000 previous. My family was Democrat and stuff like that. But it was around that time, around the 2000s, that I started becoming a little bit more aware of what was going on and uh, watching people like Alex Jones and listening to people like Ron Paul, uh, just uh, subtle exposures here and there that were going on, like what Jones did with Bohemian Grove and stuff like that. And from there, it started to build up and it started to gain momentum. And by 2020, I mean, I'm sure a lot of us were so just absolutely like fine tuned to see what was going on that we're just looking at everyone else who's still in the dark and going, what planet are you living on? Like, do you not see what is happening? Are you not aware? Or are you so willfully, willfully ignorant that you are just being blind, deaf, and dumb to everything around you? And at this point now, just even a measly three years later after 2020, it's just like, it's so in your face. I mean, it is so blatantly in your face right now that... To me, it's more shocking to see someone who's not aware to what is going on as opposed to the people who are awake and were called conspiracy theorists for the past couple decades. Well, those conspiracy theories have been chalking up to be true quite a bit, and I think we need to start paying attention to what is going on. And 
probably the most easiest thing to do to get you to start noticing what is happening is to just uh, simply take got a little project for you because I don't really know how to do this video stuff all that well I figured out how to trim the videos down to shorten them a little bit um, so that they're not like an hour and a half two hours long uh, and throw in some music and stuff like that but to put imposed pictures over this video while I'm still talking so like I haven't figured out that yet I'm not that big of a techie I really had no interest in doing these videos so I'm not gonna put it up I'm just gonna tell you to do stuff and hopefully if you're interested in these videos and want to search stuff out for yourself to go and look and see exactly what it is that uh, has people in an uproar these days that maybe you're not all that's aware about or awakened to <clears throat> and my first project for you is to go to uh, just google joe biden and google uh, him at say 2008 and then google his picture these are pictures you don't have to wiki anything just google his pictures joe biden 2008 and then google 2023 and compare the two photos that's it <laughs> just just look at them then and look at them now and you seriously honestly tell me that's the same person just look simply just view it with your eyes I heard a lot of people within the past couple of years, certain articles that tried to shoehorn um, certain sentences in like, uh, well, after Joe Biden got his plastic surgery and it's like, hold on, when was this plastic surgery? I've heard nothing about plastic surgery with Joe Biden at all, ever. You just sort of threw it in there after the fact that the dude looked different. Second, that's not plastic surgery that is full-blown facial reconstruction this is like blowfeld levels of reconstruction on the face the dude does not look the same it is a different person two different people and if you can't see that you again are just blatantly willfully ignorant to the fact it is right there directly in your face that's the first thing the second, and the one that actually caught me by surprise, is I was trying to think this week, well, what should I really go into on the two presidents? I wasn't writing notes again because I'm just trying to wing it and trying to let the Lord speak a little bit more through me or trying to give me incentive of where to take this, this episode, all episodes actually, because I noticed the more I think about certain episodes um, and where I should take it, the less that direction goes like there were times when I, I pretty much had like the whole idea of what the episode was going to be in my head or right, i'm going to talk about all this stuff not even close i don't know if the lord like just removes those ideas from me so that like before i do the episode i have it all in my head then when i speak it's not in my head then when the show's done it comes back into my head and it's like what why did you remove that and maybe it's because he's urging me to talk about more important things or things he wants me to bring out to you because maybe what I had might not have caught the ears of so many people as opposed to what I'm saying now. So I was pondering this, you know, and I'm like, okay, well, how should I do this? Maybe I should just let the Lord, you know, just speak again. Maybe I shouldn't bring up any pointers or anything. I didn't even have a quote to give for the two presidents, the opening quote to this Um and I, I do now, I'll get back into that later, which kind of ties into the political atmosphere of things, but also isn't, it's, it's more of a tongue in cheek sort of quotation. But as I was pondering all this at work, um, and I was on my lunch break, I, you know, put on Elijah's streams. I listened to that with my headphones on at work while I'm in the lunchroom or the break room. And, uh, that day on Elijah's streams, oddly enough they were filming a show called the greatest show on earth and it's just it was mind-blowing to me that literally just a few days before i was going to film this episode they had an episode on elijah streams showing a film a documentary about the very thing which i'm talking about in this episode right now and it just blew my mind i'm like oh this is 
outrageous. Now, of course, they have prophets and patriots coming on and talking about it all the time, just in a general, you know, form, but not in like a documentary, like full, like movie about what I'm going into today. And after watching that, I'm like, I have got to put this in as the recommendation, not the book recommendation. I'm going to do a film recommendation on that today. This is, you, you have to watch this film. And afterwards of watching it, you know, the next day or the, the days following, people like Julie Green talked about it. People like Wanda Elger talked about it. Uh, Midnight Cry with Dev. Wait, was it Midnight Cry with Dev? No, um, A Watchman's Journal with Diana Larkin. Midnight Cry might have brought it up. I don't know if she's seen it or not, but uh, Diana Larkin brought it up. Um, all these different people are bringing up this movie and they're like, you need to watch this because it explains so much and it's funny because it's stuff that i've seen previously but it was in bits and pieces here and there throughout the years of what is going on with trump what is going on with biden the biden because biden joe biden's not here anymore this dude's gone right the guy in office is an actor what is going on with the global elite? What is going on with the different world powers? I've seen all this before, but somebody finally compiled everything together in one documentary and made it into a film which follows through very good. There, I will say there is a part in the middle of the film where it starts to just sort of drag on a little bit. And when they're talking about bricks, the new um, gold standard uh, currency, that the superpowers over in the east are trying to make and i'll get into that in a bit and i'm i'm not for or against bricks i'm i'm kind of leading towards it and i'll explain why in just a little bit but um <clears throat> when it comes to trump and joe biden we need to realize that what we see before us as all the prophets have talked about is that things are not what they appear to be there is a different there's there's something going on behind the scenes where everything that you are shown in the news everything that you are led to believe not just with our nation but nations around the world is completely wrong there is a different show going on behind the curtain that we're not seeing that hasn't been exposed yet and i'm going to bring up something different both of the Patriots and the Prophets today, that maybe they might not have been fully aware of, especially when I hear them saying things like, things are not as they appear to be, and then watching this film, The Greatest Show on Earth. Something clicked in me, which I don't think a lot of people have realized yet. And again, I'll get to that in just a bit. But before I do, I would like to take a moment to explain certain things to the church, to the ecclesia, both who are patriots and are um, have a strong standing for this country and other nations around the world, uh, and to those who believe that we shouldn't be at all interested in politics, in a governing system here in this realm. <clears throat> no, I had up a litany of different Bible verses here, which I could read off and go into long tangents on how the government works here in a biblical sense. There's different passages here. I'm looking at them or was looking at them. They're kind of behind the camera now, but I'm looking at them where God puts people in power for these particular reasons. We're supposed to obey government because it was by God's law that he put them there for a reason to govern. Um, what gets me is how far, not just uh, in a general sense of the world, but when you look at the United States, because that's where I'm at, and so I need to focus more on our nation, how far we have fallen as a nation since providence since the mayflower even since uh the revolutionary war and how we came to be as the united states of america so the whole the continuation of the mayflower onward since that inception of us coming over here and building a land uh a, a nation one nation under god 
to where it is now is just they have got to be turning over in their graves like uh, it, it is it is just nauseatingly sick the just lack of interest of lack of faith lack of just any history knowledge whatsoever these days with people especially students today young people in their 20s even 30s now that are just so completely clueless as to how this nation came to be i don't know if you've watched those videos i can't remember who does them probably many people actually probably i, I know infowars does one and there's there's different people that go around and they go to places like venice beach and they ask they ask people questions just simple questions like who won the revolutionary war you know and these people are like domino's pizza like they, they have no idea like they are so just gone as to how our nation came to be yet they're going out and they're celebrating the fourth of july oh we're just going out to watch the fireworks and get drunk do you know why you're doing it uh i don't know because maybe somebody got kicked in the head by a uh, clydesdale and then the war was won and then that was it you know it's like what do you do you know anything about our heritage at all it's it's frightening that we have so much going into the school system <laughs> like just billions of dollars and they're not learning anything our, our school system i don't know if many people know this but uh school systems are not exactly underfunded here in idaho the funding for each student is about nine thousand dollars a year in places like new york i think it's twenty two thousand dollars a year when trump said that he was going to give the parents free choice to choose that meant the money would have came to them and they could use that to put them in whatever school they wanted to do you have any idea what twenty two thousand dollars every year for your kid what school you could put them in pr pr practically at least here in idaho any private school you wanted to i mean it's like people always get the assumption that private schools are more expensive but they're not they're actually cheaper not more expensive um all the funding that goes in from the federal money it, they just get loads and loads and loads of it but if you compare it to what the private schools actually charge for their tuition it's just like it, it's insanely cheaper so on the whole I, I know that there's some really high ritzy private schools out there but in general private schools are insanely cheaper than public and if we had free choice uh, and we got that money for our children instead of it going to the schools and we chose where to put our kids and gave them the money for that you would have money in the bank left over from all that and not only that but i'm kind of under the assumption your kids would get a way better education out there in the public school systems and they'll understand who won the war of, <laughs> who won the revolutionary war um it just i don't know that's just my little tangent i went off uh sorry about that but i'm just I, i'm just saying it's 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 ridiculous how far we have fallen as a nation i think education um preservance of our past national heritage uh remembrance of how we came to be in this nation uh is probably a good starting point to returning back to what we were and what we were the point that i was trying to get to sorry for running off was uh we do have a covenant with god it's the reversal of the israelites where god comes down and makes a covenant with them we at providence and many of the other starting points within our nation say like uh the new england territories with their own personal state constitutions and stuff like that and the building of this nation with uh, the declaration of independence and the constitution we've we've made covenants with god we've made a covenant up to him instead of him coming down to us we have gone up to him and i don't think god is really sitting there going uh, no you know I, I don't think he's not accepting the covenant we have made a covenant with him but i think throughout the years we have broken that covenant but god hasn't and he is restoring us back to the original covenant which we had intentionally made with him at the beginning of our foundation you gotta remember when when they were trying to figure out what type of nation this would be 
with our founding fathers, they would go in and, and they would pray for like four hours straight, just on their faces, crying, trying to plead to God to give them guidance as to how to make this nation. The Declaration mentions God four times. And it, it, it's just, it's baffling to me how people say that we're not a Christian nation. Oh, we're not a Christian nation. The, the, the Declaration has nothing to do with the Constitution. Well, it does, actually. The Constitution explains what we are, and the Declaration explains why we are. And you can't have one with the other. They're interlocked together. Now, now how we are is through the amendments, especially within the Bill of Rights. But they're all interconnected. You can't exclude one. Oh, the Declaration doesn't mean anything. It does. It is our Declaration of Independence from England and why we did it and why we started up this nation. Now, what we started up from that is the Constitution, yes. But they go hand in hand. And it blows my mind. So many people say we're not a Christian nation. And the only grounding that they really have is this one letter. I believe it was by Madison? Adams, I'll have to go back on the wallbuilders.com, but it was the Treaty of Tripoli where they were expressing to the Muslim countries that we're not a Christian nation. Well, the way that they phrased it, they were speaking of theocracies because that's what Muslim nations were. They were monocratic theocracies. <laughs> can't speak. Monocratic theocracies, which means anyone who wasn't a Muslim was a secondhand citizen. It was like that was the ruling faith of that nation. And America was trying to be you know, in the lines of that, expressing that that's not what our nation is. It's we started as a Christian nation, but people in this country who aren't Christian aren't secondhand citizens. They're citizens of this country. We don't treat them differently. We treat them as Americans. We don't treat them as slaves. We treat them as Americans. And I'm going to get to that in just a sec with the slave issue. I think that, that was the first of all that we had within this nation was that. It's funny that they do stuff like signing the Treaty of Tripoli and talking about the, the, the slave trade and stuff like that, and yet we had slaves to deal with in our own nation. <clears throat> the problem with that is that when our Constitution was originally written and we had the 13 colonies, they were going to abolish slavery. They, they wanted to stop it. They're like, we, we need to put an end to slavery right now. <clears throat> And I think they finally talked it over and said, well, let's give it eight years. And I think there was an eight year span where they were just going to stretch it out and then just slowly usher in slavery removal from that to give people time to just settle into it and stuff like that instead of just carte blanche ending it. And I think that was the first mistake America had because within that eight year period, the cotton industry happened and the boom of slavery just exploded with the landowners that wanted to make money off this cotton industry <laughs> and from that slavery was extended longer and longer until finally the people that originally wanted to end it you know it got such an uprising that that's what happened with the civil war and i know many people in the south say that slavery wasn't the main reason for you know the civil war i get that a lot of my family is in Virginia, so I got Southerners in the family. It's like, well, no, the slavery isn't isn't the main reason of the Civil Wars. Yeah, okay, fine. But can we at least have the honesty to say it was one of about three top reasons why the Civil War was started? Can we at least have the balls to say that? So, yeah, it might not have been the main reason, but it's a pretty high reason. It was right up there. <clears throat> and I think the deaths of so many in this country because of the Civil War and why it happened could have been lessened or maybe not even a Civil War at all had the Founding Fathers just had the gumption to just stand up and just be like, no, we're ending slavery right now. Well, let's give it eight years. No, we're, we're just stopping it right now. Spread the memo around, you know. Landowners need to give up their slavery. We're not doing this, you know, right at the initiation point of our nation. I think we would have been on a totally different track with our country had they done that. Many people say that our falling away was with abortion because we're reaching the 50 year jubilee right now of, you know, Roe v. Wade. In fact, I don't even think it was Roe v. Wade. It was before Roe v. Wade, a couple of years before. 1970, if I'm not mistaken, when they first allowed abortion on demand. And we're reaching that 50-year mark. Uh, 2020 was that. And 
from there, people say that God was removing his hand because of the abortion issue. And now because people are coming back to him and realizing what is going on and all this exposure is happening these days, God is slowly bringing his hand back down on the covenant that we originally intended to do with him. So, yeah, I feel abortion was at, uh, it's also the 50 year jubilee of the uh, Arabian petrodollar, if I'm not mistaken, as well, too. So there's a lot of things that are going on right now where this 50 year jubilee is kicking in and the exposures are starting to come out and the turnaround is starting to happen from that jubilee. Um, but I, I think, I think the, the covenant removal of God's hand goes back farther than that. Now, I think we paid the price for slavery with the civil war, with thousands upon thousands of people dying because of that war. And I think, again, had we initially just ended slavery right at the beginning when they wanted to do it, we'd be in a totally different nation. We wouldn't have all this BLM garbage going on. There wouldn't have been segregation in the 50s. There might have been a small amount you know, farther back at its initiation point, I'm sure, because you're never going to fully get rid of, you know, racists, which is ridiculous because there's only one race. It's the human race. You know, I think you're talking about ethnicities and cultures and creeds. It has nothing to do with race. It's just one race. But because of the stupidity of man, there's always going to be racists around. So it might have taken a little bit longer and segregation may have happened, but I think it would have been the kindling of that would have been put out long before the Civil War and even extending into with JFK, just everything that has been going down within that time from the Civil War until the 60s with the segregation. So I think there's there's many things that if God is going to keep his covenant with us, um, because he believes in his word, even though we fail constantly, there's certain things within our nation that's going to be changed over uh, to fit that covenant. And if we follow suit to what he wants us to do, there'll be less, less detriment, less wars, less of a spanking, I think is the best way to explain it. Because the Civil War, I think, was a personal spanking on us from God which we didn't follow through with what we intended to do and we let it lapse and that was that was the repercussions of doing so that being said i think god is still holding a covenant with us he holds a covenant with many nations um but i, I believe ours since we gave it to him he wants to hold that hold that covenant true and the changes are coming to where the tables are being flipped. And one of the reasons why this exposure is happening and for us to wake up and have a call to arms, I feel, is because we've negated on our purpose to our covenant, but also to just in general what this nation is, like what the Constitution is. There's so many people in the church that are just shocked and in awe of how far we've fallen as a nation and as a world in general, but even just what we are in this nation, how far we've fallen. And it's like, I don't understand what's going on. It's like, well, it's because we've given the enemy leeway so much. It's because we just allow them to take an inch and then another inch and then another inch and then it moves to a foot and then it moves to a mile and we just allow it. And it's, oh, we shouldn't, we shouldn't uh, bring it up. Just let them do what they want to do. We'll stay in the church because they say stuff like, you know, let's not talk about politics in the church. And it just, it baffles me because it's, you need to scream politics in the church. You remember back in the 1800s, you know, the pastor or the reverend would get up to the pulpit and say, Senator Jones is a whoremonger, you know? And it's like, they, they just, they lashed out at these people because they weren't following true to their God-given right to lead or their ordination to lead god was putting them in power and they were just screwing it up left and right and the church wasn't calling them out now we slipped even farther to where all these um three letter agencies if you want to call them that or all these organizations or all these you know different types of people uh movements are coming in and you know they want their piece of the pie and they're just taking and taking and taking and taking and we don't see anything about it and it's like, well, we can't because the church doesn't belong in politics. It's like our church doesn't belong in politics. Okay, tell that to King David, King Solomon, Christ the King. 
and you may say that those are those are kingships those aren't political well i hate to say it but a monocratic theocracy is still governed with a political aspect they still have their ideologies they still have their rulings they still have their ordinations the declarations and decrees even if they are a deity you know it's still political not only that but you need to remember that god put certain people in political positions right look at joseph look at daniel look at the people uh, the judges look at the prophets who spoke on behalf and to the kings from god to give them you know ordinances uh, god says this you must do this you, you did wrong here god is punishing you because of this the bible is very political because god has a certain ideology a certain way and absolute righteousness which we need to follow and if we're supposed to put people in charge of our nations to govern in that way then that is political and you need to vote with your political ideology in in regards to what god says to follow the bible and vote for the people that are standing with the bible i can't understand why people are joining a party that is just all about death like if you're joining a party and their idea is abortion on demand anytime up to the age of two years old wrong party sorry wrong party you need to get out of that party if you're joining a party that wants to have fornication and and sodomy and you know like the rainbow flags everywhere and peace and love for everyone and it's like without having the rules to follow as to what love is how to love who to love and why to love them wrong party you need to get out of that party and i know this isn't just a democrat or republican issue it is based on ideologies it's based on the moral compass of yourself and how it attains to god and what he says and if you're following that so i understand there's other people in the republican party as well too that have these thoughts that that, that think abortion is okay for any sort of reason or you know think that that you can do whatever you want in sexual actions and perversions whatsoever and without a thought given to god <laughs> I understand it's more than just the party it has to do with the individual okay fine vote individually there's many democrats that i see in office today that are actually really good like they have a moral compass all right vote for those people in the office if the republican is not doing a good job or he's going to be a rhino and not do anything at all but this democrat even though you know it's side with their particular political beliefs but they're standing up for what is truth what is righteous what is good put that person in vote them in seriously it's a, I I don't I don't believe in parties I believe in ideologies and if and if that moral compass fits God and if it goes to a particular party more than it does another that's the side I'm going for but to be perfectly honest within these past couple of years I can't even call myself a Republican I call myself a conservative but I don't believe in the Republican Party not after all the garbage that has went down these past three years and these people sitting literally you know their arms elbow deep up their posteriors they, they they're just they're not doing anything and it's just it's shocking to see how both sides are being bought out by this global elite nonsense and it's it's saddening and and there's so many people who are not awake to any of this and it's just it's haunting to be honest especially with all that's been going down it's getting to the point that so many of us are waiting to see what god is going to do in this time like i'm i'm just i'm impatient as all get out i'm like lord i don't care if you literally have to rip the planet in two at this point do something like these people need to be awake and nobody's waking up to this at least from my perspective and i i should apologize in saying that because i'm sure there are many who have been woken up but my friends, my family, people at work, uh, even people in, in my own congregation, people that I hang out with, people that I've known for years, uh, nobody, not one single person has ever once told me that they're awake to this. And it's just, it's sad. I'm hoping many of you out there have been able to reach people yourself to see what is going on, you know, to expose them to the truth of what is happening. Um, and it, if not, I, I recommend 
playing that video, The Greatest Show on Earth. That's my video recommendation, swapping it out from a book recommendation. Highly suggest you check it out. Um, for the link that I'm going to give you guys today, I strongly, strongly encourage to go to David Barton's website called wallbuilders.com. At, I'm sorry, maybe wallbuilders.org? I think it's wallbuilders.com. I'll put it in the link below. You can check it out. I can't remember which dot three-letter word it was, but I think it's .com. He explains a whole bunch of stuff of things like what separation of church and state truly means. There, There is no such thing. It's not anywhere in the Constitution at all. It's not the First Amendment. Um, separation of church and state was a letter written by Thomas Jefferson to the Danbury Baptist because they were they were worried that they would get segregated themselves or pushed out of um, you know being uh, they would think themselves as secondhand citizens because of their faith and Thomas Jefferson no 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 there's there is a separation of church and state but the separation is a one-sided door which means the church has the sway to influence the government but the government has no sway whatsoever to influence the church and today it's a complete 180 from what that letter was saying it's completely reversed now the government is 501c3 you know pushing on to the churches and forcing them to say what what they want them to say and if you say something different you can be arrested look at all the stuff that happened in covid where pastors were getting arrested for preaching um just just a whole mess a whole slew of stuff that that has been flipped on its head and i think that's what god is coming to he's come to restore the nation to what it originally was and i think we as americans i'll say this worldly but especially to us because of our constitution we need to wake up and realize that we are the ones in charge and i'm saying to go to wallbuilders.com to read up on this as well too um I'm, I'm not saying that lightly. I'm saying that constitutionally. If you read it, it starts with we the people. We are the self-governing body of this nation. We have given this nation to God. It has been mentioned countless times in countless letters, both public and private, by many of the founding fathers. We are a Christian nation. It is so right there in your face. You, you can't deny this. That is what we are, and that is what we will always be, Lord willing. But it starts with us. And if you read the Constitution and go down, at the very bottom is the federal government. The federal government is the people that are just supposed to hold the nation kind of like glue. It's like the Velcro that holds it together. All right? They don't make up new laws. They just they hold the laws together, all right? They, there's literally two things that the government, the federal government is supposed to do, punish evildoers and protect us from invaders. Constitutionally, that's it. That is all they're supposed to do. And it has been so flipped on its head to think that we are the subjects to the federal government. We're not, they work for us. We are the ones in charge. We have negated our responsibilities as Americans within this nation, as citizens of this nation. We have negated that and we gave the federal government all this power. We just allowed them to do it. Through years and years and years of we don't speak politics. Again, you need to scream politics. You need to scream from the pulpit. You need to have people be self-aware of who they are, not just in God, but who we are in this nation. We're the owners of this nation, not the government. It never was the government, ever. They crept in and changed it throughout many decades, especially in 1913. Read up on that with the Federal Reserve and how, uh, or, or even farther back than that in the 1800s, 1870s, I think, where we went from, from the United States, you know, <laughs> we, we became a, a corporation, pretty much. Watch the film, The Greatest Show on Earth. It'll explain all of this and how God is turning that back removing the corporation, removing this global elite, removing the Federal Reserve, bringing back the gold standard, bringing back our nation as a whole to what we were supposed to be rulers of our nation. We need to 
wake up and realize that we have to wake up and take charge of who we are both spiritually and nationally we are kings and priests we're working for god we need to declare and decree what he's doing but we also need to realize that we're supposed to be stewards of this nation we're supposed to be the rulers of this nation we're supposed to be the self-governing body of this nation and the baseline the federal government is the one that just sort of holds it together and makes sure that everything is played out nice it's like the referee in a game that's all that they are that's all that they were supposed to be and we've let it go just completely awol from that the minute you realize that the minute you wake up to what you're supposed to be and realize that this is a call to arms right now all right we're not heading into a war we are in a war this is a war season there's a time for peace and there is a time for war this is a war we're in a spiritual war right now and we need to snap out of it and start waking up to this calling and i think the sooner we do the sooner this happens the sooner we are all on board to what god is calling us to do the quicker this gets turned around because he wants us to be partakers in this war not just bystanders watching everything go off we are the weapons that god is using for this time we need to speak out we need to pray if you don't believe in decreeing and declaring minimally pray to everything that is going on that all this gets turned around and there will be backlash because of it the exposures are coming out i don't know if you've noticed but the past couple months there has just been bombshell after bombshell after bombshell after bombshell of exposures non-stop constantly and i think the global elite are just losing their minds right now and they will attack back biological warfare nuclear warfare i have no idea what it is but i will bring a small ray of hope and this is just my own interpretation from it i don't know if it was the holy spirit that was giving me a quick nudge about it i'm just gonna bring this up and i'm gonna i'm gonna try and lighten the mood a little bit for you i'm gonna start off with something dark <laughs> so there's there was supposed to be uh, there have actually been many prophets that are saying that there's a soon coming invasion we don't really know who this is uh, some say it's russia some say it is china i think it may be both i think it may be a unified invasion against this nation now before you get all crazy and upset watch the film the greatest show on earth i will link it below watch it look at all the things trump did during this time well in 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 his first term sorry look at all the people who are unified and backed with him it was china it was russia he crossed over into north korea he went to saudi arabia he went to britain he went to south america there's so many people that are backing him this is a very covert operation and i could be wrong but i'm getting this weird impression when the prophets say do not believe everything you see nothing is as it seems I feel this invasion is not an enemy invasion, but a good one. I think there's something that's going to fall flat on its head where the global elite think they are using certain nations like Russia and China to invade this country and bring in their own world power, world system. And it's the people who joined Trump that are making the calls and flipping that on its head this is not an invasion this will be the calvary that's coming in and ending this you look at the leaders like putin and uh what's his name xiao jinping is, is that how you pronounce his name they and uh the leaders in saudi arabia they were all together with trump on this they said even putin said handed him a soccer ball and said the balls in your court like there's something going down there's a covert sting operation going down right now where it seems that at least not the nations but the leaders of those nations are playing ball with trump because they want the global elite out of their nation too putin might be the leader of russia just as trump was the president of our nation but he had the whole global elite and major media 
and big tech and everyone else fighting against him since day one. It's just been fight, 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 nonstop, constant opposition every single day of his life since his first term. What makes you think that Putin isn't the same or Xi Jinping or, or, any, or Bolsonaro or any of these other leaders like in Saudi Arabia or, or, or around the world that actually internally themselves may be white hats, may be the good guys, um, and they don't want the global elite there. It's not technically them that's doing it. We always think of this world leaders as like this apex where it's like at the top, you know, Putin's in there with a cigar and he's like, kill them all. You know, it's, it's, it's like he may actually be one of the good guys and it's the global elites that are encompassing his nation that are working, you know, uh, underground and in hidden rooms and stuff like that. He wants them eradicated. And Putin may have his own agenda, obviously. I'm not saying they're perfect people. They, they obviously have their own agendas. I mean, you know, with, with the CCP and stuff like that, it's, it's obviously there's, there's something else going on. But I think, I think they want all that eradicated as well. And I think this is where BRICS comes in. I think BRICS, even though it started in 2009, is part of this covert operation. And they're trying to bring in this gold standard to eradicate the G7, this Federal Reserve standard and totally wipe it out. But I don't think it could have been done internally in this nation. It had to have been done externally because if it was done internally, it would have probably fell flat on its face and anyone who tried to did, do it would most likely end up dead. I think all these various nations from the, uh, around the world gathering together to start up this BRICS gold standard may be the starting point to ruining the Federal Reserve, our dollar, which sounds bad, trust me, it's a good thing because we need to get back to the gold standard. They're putting us more and more and more into debt with this Federal Reserve system, with this worldly system, with the new digital currency banking system, which is coming on, which is air, more or less, is there's no tangibility to it whatsoever. There's no gold. There's, there's nothing to back it up with precious metals. BRICS is trying to start that. And I think it's going to be the external force that helps wipe out this worldly Babylonian system. So... Pay attention, you know, I'm not saying take everything I say as, as you know, like the word of God, logically. Follow everything up with discernment, you know, test all the spirits, test everyone, you know, use your discernment, ask the Holy Spirit, ask God. Just uh, all I'm saying is that this is just something that popped into my mind after I watched that video. Just start paying attention to certain things. As I say, things are not as they appear. There's something else going on. It may look one way, just as, you know, they, they said Putin is the evil villain here when all he was doing was going in and blowing up these these uh, uh, biological um, depots all around Ukraine that were pretty much being defended by the Nazis of those states. That's where COVID came from. That's where the biological warfare is happening. And he's also exposing underground railways for child trafficking and stuff in that nation is too. But the media is putting it off that he's the villain when he's the guy going in and trying to free people of this. There's many in the Ukraine, the Ukraine, I'm sorry. There's many in Ukraine, just key hint there. Stop saying the Ukraine. It's Ukraine. Now, you don't say the France. It's just France. So people going into Ukraine and exposing all this, but the media is not covering it. So there's a there's a different play going on here that's being very subverted. It's being very hidden. It's being not covered by any of the media. We need to start paying attention to certain little nuggets here and there of what's actually happening. And how God is working and how he is moving both within the governments around the world and the spiritual warfare of his own powers uh, and, and battles that he's going on with the angelic too. It's a unified global turnaround to bring back restoration, not just to this nation, but to the world, what God had intended with his original creation. And that is where we get the kingdom age. Not going to be, you know, like rainbows from then on in. It's the last harvest season. There's going to be a lot of good things that come from it, but the enemy will be under our feet. We won't be under his during this time. There'll be a lot of new creations and a, new, a lot of new revivals, a lot of new things happening in the church, both in the corporate for congregations, but uh, a lot of people say there's going to be a lot of home churches popping up everywhere, a lot of revivals, a lot of the football fields and stuff like that are not going to be turned and flipped around for these mass giant uh, revival centers. That'd be really cool. Um, whole bunch of things going on. Uh, and billion soul harvest. And when the billion soul harvest is done and over with, I feel that's when 
us who are alive and remain will be raptured up with the dead in Christ to meet Jesus in the clouds. Again, I, I just have this weird notion that the dead in Christ is going to be something we're going to view and see. And that's what kicks off this Kingdom Age Last Harvest to get us in gear so that we can get raptured up too. So, again, just, just my own interpretation of it. If you don't believe me, I'd recommend you start reading scripture and getting into it a little more. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Before I end, it's getting a little longer. This is going to get, I think, longer than my spiritual warfare one, which is interesting. Anyways, it's the opening quote that I had, which... I'll get to that right now. Sorry. Mark 12, 17. Then Jesus said unto them, Give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. And they were amazed at him. I think there's something to this. Uh, there's there's many things that say we should follow the government, and within our own nation, we should, because we're the rulers of our government, and the federal government is below us, and they're the ones that are subverting the rulership and corrupting everything within this nation. We need to return it back to what we had originally with us as rulers in this nation, following God, praising him, living for his lifestyle, what he ordained us to be. But the minute that corruption happens, we need to defy that. I mean, uh, look, at, look at the fiery furnace of defying... Um, Nebuchadnezzar to not bow down to him. L look at uh, the the different pharaohs of not bowing down to them, and just being like, I, I I need to follow God. There's a time where you follow the governing system, but the minute that governing system starts to get corrupted here, and they go against God, you need to stand for God. And I, I feel this is another thing in the political movement that we need to start bringing up in churches too, and just being like, look, uh, this this. This system, this government system, is getting corrupted. We need to, we need to stand up for what God believes and start imposing that back into the system, not removing ourselves from it, not negating everything that the government system is doing, because then it'll just get more and more and more and more corrupted, and then you won't have a nation at all anymore, which was uh, being held in covenant with God. I hope we need to bring that back. And the 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 quote that Jesus said it got me thinking and it was it was kind of funny give back to Caesar's what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's all right that's that's true but think about it well what is Caesar's well the taxes are his okay what taxes well you got to give them you know the precious metal the gold coins the the metals that we have whatever they used back in those days silver copper bronze oh did Caesar make the gold you know, did did he make the ground and, and and the the earth in which the gold was formed, or the coins were formed, or the precious metal was formed? As far as I'm concerned, everything is God's. Nothing is Caesar's. Now he put these people in positions of power and stuff like that. And I think there's a reason why. It's to show either um, the fulfillment of being good as a nation what god blesses you or the repercussions of being bad and you're going to have a bad ruler within that nation if you're going to follow him then we're just going to be falling into destruction and stuff like that so i think there's a reason why certain leaders are put into place but i found it almost a, a tongue-in-cheek sentence from jesus you know give unto caesar what is caesar's give unto god what is god's it's like everything is god's and when you think about it, nothing is Caesar's apart from what God gives him or blesses him with. So just something to bang around in your head. I, I found that one a little funny. So yes, we do need to follow our government. There's plenty of verses that say we need to be subservient to the people put in charge. But the minute that they go against what God has ordained, they're no longer in charge. God's in charge. And we need to follow him and what he believes and stand up for what God is saying not what the evil elites are saying. We need to take up our responsibility, uh, not just a responsibility, uh, an order almost from our constitution. We as citizens are ordered to vote. We need to go out and vote for the right person with our own conscience, with our own morals, and make sure the right person gets in office to do the right thing for our nation under God. And I hope that helps. And I hope you guys got a little bit of a nugget today. I sort of went off on a tangent. We're over an hour right now. I probably could have talked a little bit more, but I'm going to chop this up a little bit so that it's not so lengthy and that um, you stand up, start getting into the call to arms for this turnaround of what God is going to be doing. Realize that we are one nation and God. We were a Christian nation and hopefully we'll return back to that with his covenant be a part of this war. Don't be a bystander. Stand up for what is going on. Start 
waking yourself up to what is going on. Even as much as you hate Trump, there's many prophets that say this is God's new, he's got David's anointing on him. He's a new Cyrus. And you may laugh at that, but if jaw, <laughs> if God can use the jawbone of an ass to get his work done, I'm sure he can use Trump. So pay attention to what's going on. Highly, almost require you as part of watching this film to watch The Greatest Show on Earth listed below to at least get you the knowledge of what is going on and realize that Trump is still president. Biden is not Biden. He's gone. This is an actor. There's many, many actors in office right now. And we need to start paying attention to what is going on in this day and age. And I pray that this has helped you and that you can move closer to God and is calling for what he has for you and be part of this great awakening and new kingdom age and last harvest season. So take care. God bless. Lord, thank you for this time. I know I went off on a tangent. I'll try and polish it up as much as I can so I don't sound like a rambling, raving lunatic. I'm just missing the drool from my cheek. And that other people that may have woken up to this uh, and realized their calling here in the nation also realize their calling in the spiritual warfare and why they have the calling is because they are kings and priests and realize that from their actions and what they are doing and what they are showing that hopefully others that they care about and love will catch up and we will see the turnaround happen faster and quicker than anticipated. So take care and God bless. I will talk to you next week on the next episode, which I have no idea what it is because I forgot to look. <laughs> so talk to you soon. Take care and God bless.